So uh, I I recently got my hands on uh, this uh, transponder here. Yeah. So this is uh, it's not working, but uh, it's a very old one from my flying club. Okay. So obviously, when I get something like this, I want to see what's inside, right? <laughs> Okay, but before I go to what's inside the transporter, I will need to go through some uh, radar, radar theory first because uh, I know most of you are not into aviation stuff. So without understanding this theory, you will not understand how this transponder works. Okay, so let's first start with uh, this thing called primary surveillance radar. So it's, it's re really the radar at its most basic form. The, the radar system will send out uh, radio waves and then the radio waves hit the target and the target uh, will then the radar waves will get reflected back to the source. So the radar system will then uh, know how far the way the target is based on how long it takes for the signal to travel there and back. Okay. So there are some uh, problems with this. Uh. So three issues, the uh, range and identity and the altitude. Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, the first issue is that of range. So it's, uh, the range is calculated based on this uh, rather complicated formula. So what it means is that the, the, you need to know how much power the transmitter is outputting, right? Which is the, the PT and then the gain. So gain means how much improvement the directional radar is. Uh, uh, radar is, okay. Radar is compared to the uh, a normal omnidirectional radar. Then also there's something called a radar cross-section. It means uh, how reflective the distance object is. So, and this one here, this uh, is a rate of decay because uh, the radar waves will actually decay at a rate of uh, square, the power of two, right? But the thing is, when you send a radar signal out, you hit the distal target and reflect back. So, it actually, is the signal decreases at the rate of the fourth power. So, it means that uh, you need a very powerful radar if you want to increase the range of the, the radar, okay? Then the second uh, problem is the that of anonymous radar returns, right? You, if let's say you don't have any form of identification, then uh, uh, you become the radar operator doesn't really know like who who is it, what what system is reflecting it, right? So uh, this is an issue. Then the next thing is that uh, we cannot get altitude. The conventional radar systems that most uh, civil radars use, right? They can they only work in 2D because of the way the the rate the beam forming works, right? So if you need to detect the altitude, you need another radar system. So for the military, they have to because you your obviously your enemy won't tell you how high they are, right? So they will have a second radar specifically just to detect the height. Uh, the problem is if you do that, you are going to increase the cost of the radar system. So it's really expensive to do it, uh. So because of this, right, uh, similar radars, they cannot tell the altitude of the object. They only know the longitude and latitude position. Okay, so this is to solve the three problems, right? This is where aircraft transponders uh, come in, right? So for, to solve the range issue, right, instead of having the powerful radar waves, like travel to the object and bounce back, now the radar waves just need to travel one way. And there'll be a device, a transponder, will, re will receive this uh, radar wave, and then it will re reply back, right? So we just, so it doesn't need such a powerful radar system. And for the identity problem, right, uh, the transponder will reply the identity. So this is how it works, right? Uh, the radar system will actually pulse a special signal. It's called a mode A inter interrogation of eight microseconds apart. So when the transponder uh, detects this kind of signal, right, it will send back the squat code. So a squat code is something like a four-digit autocode. So this is uh, where the pilot will set the code inside here in this, in this transponder. So this code is actually provided by the air traffic controller. And as for this P2, right, I'll, I'll talk about it later. What, what is this thing? Then for the altitude, right, so the radar system will actually alternate between ascending a mode A and a mode C inter interrogation. A mode C will be se means a signal separated by 21 microseconds. So when the transponder detects this particular uh, signal, then it will send back the altitude of the aircraft. So over what is, so uh, let me go through what is this P2 thing, right? So this P2 thing is because of the way a directional antenna works. 
So let's say if a direction of the antenna sends a signal out, a straight out like that, there is a car, some kind of a signal leakage on the side, the side load here. So if let's say an aircraft is very close to the radar system, right, it can easily mistake the side load for the main load signal. So uh, to solve this issue, right, the the radar system will actually send out an omnidirectional signal a few microseconds apart. I think it's about three microseconds apart. After it has sent out the P1 signal. So the any aircraft right who receives this uh, P2 exactly certain amount of time after P1, right, they will know that this the P1 is genuine. I mean, it's not from a side load. Okay, so how does the transponder reply? So uh, they reply in this certain amount of time slots, right? So they send the F1 to indic indicate transmission start. Then you send back all these bits. These are all binary bits, right? All this. So uh, to give an idea what was all this, right? I just show you a brief table of right? what it means. Uh. So let's say there's an altitude. Okay, let's say you are at sea level, right? Zero feet. Then you send back this code, this bunch of code. Right. And if, let's say there's a squad code of 0620, it will send back this. So it's in this uh, format. There's a whole table here. Okay, so now let's go to the, the transponder. So uh, how what does this front view look like? Right? So these are all the, the functions there. So the first thing is uh, off means to turn it off. Okay, so SBY means it's on standby. So the device is uh, on, but it's not uh, transmitting. Right? This is because later you see it uses a vacuum tube. So the vacuum tube needs some time to warm up. Okay. Then uh, if the pilot sets this to on, it means that the transponder will only reply to mode A interrogation, which means that you only reply the spot code. It will not reply the other tube. If the pilot sets this to ALT, it will reply to both mode A and C interrogation. So the pilot will set this uh, to ALT mode uh, just before takeoff. Okay, there's a reply line here to indicate that the transponder is responding. Uh, then, yeah, to, re to adjust the brightness of the lamp. Then uh, for the ID button, it is to actually send a special signal. So let's say if the air traffic controller right, cannot really tell uh, which aircraft are you, so the ATC will tell the pilot, okay, please press ID. So the pilot press ID, the transporter will set a special signal out. Then the, the air traffic controller will, uh, will see on the screen that this uh, uh, this aircraft has pressed the ID button. Then they will know where are you. Okay, so at the back of the transponder, uh, we have this. So at first I didn't know what, what that is. So I googled, uh, I look, I found out that actually it's meant to connect to something called an altitude encoder. So this is where the transponder can get the altitude information. And the transponder itself, if not the transponder itself, doesn't know how, how high the aircraft is. So the, uh, the altitude encoder will actually encode it to this one, you know, the A1, A2, 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 A4 bits. Just nice for the transponder to send it back down to the radar. Okay, so when I first uh, opened the, the box, so this is what I found. And you notice that really this is very old, right? There's uh, no microcontrollers there. Everything is, you can see the PCB, this PCB is hand-drawn. <laughs> it's not, not, not designed by any software, okay? Okay, so uh, for the RF portion, right? Uh, so I'm, I'm not an RF person, so I'm just guessing that this is probably, the, uh, people have told me this is a tube amplifier. And, and then the, there's some uh, low-pass filters, so the, the low pass filters are probably here. So the, the, you have the inductor, the capacitor, and the resistors over there. I'm guessing those are low pass filters. Then uh, there's also a diplexer. So this diplexer is probably the one that can uh, separate between the transmit and the receive. You can see the date over here. 7913. Well, it's 1979 week 13, I guess. That, that's that old. Okay, so, uh, so when I found there's a strange crystal value there, 161.667. Like when I first look at it, I don't know why it's such a weird value. But when I multiply it by six, I get a very nearly round number of 970 megahertz. So with that nice number, right, I googled, right? So I realized, oh yeah, this is wonder why, why, why that crystal is for. It's because uh, 
it's supposed to like help to shift that uh, heart, the 10, 30 megahertz. This is where the radar transmits, radar transmit frequency to 60 megahertz. So that it's easier for the, the rest of the electronics to process. Yeah, so apparently it's called an intermediate frequency. Okay. Uh, I also found out that there's a lot of uh, trim ports here. So I, I took a multimeter to check, they're really trim ports. So uh, I'm guessing they are, it's for post-manufacturing calibration or any maintenance tuning it's because uh this kind of transponders right you see it's 1979 it's already like 40 years old like 50 years old <laughs> yeah 40 plus years old so uh and it's still so these systems are actually still in service right so when this service was so long right very likely that in internal components the tolerances, tolerances will shift uh. so i think that's why uh, the it's for the maintenance engineers to tune this uh, uh this transfer back to specification so that it can still be used. Okay, uh, lots of NAND chips and lots of... Uh, I, actually, I didn't know what the NAND chips are for, but then they are all the squad code and actually encode pins are connected to them. So the people have commented that, say that it's not surprising that NAND chips are being used because NAND chips are the most universal. You can make any gate from a NAND gate. And also, it can be used to disable uh, squad code and actually encode pins because mode A and mode C, you cannot send, you need to decide which bit to send. So they probably they use it to black out which bits that can or cannot be sent. Okay, so a uh, uh, conclusion, yeah, so I, I have no background in RF. And the, what made this very difficult was that uh, there was no documentation at all. No manners and no schematic. This device is 40 years old. I, I tried to Google it, cannot find anything on it. And the part numbers have no help. Yeah, I, I, there's a few amplifier there. I tried to Google it, right? I, Google doesn't give me anything. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, really, yeah, I miss what what they've done. Uh, this is this technology is actually in based on nineteen sixty, and it's still being used today. But uh, nowadays, right, aviation is moving away from uh, this kind of transponders already. They are moving to something called ADSB. So ADSB is like the transponder is actually connected to the aircraft's GPS, and the transponder will reply the latitude and longitude back to the radar system. So. So no longer you need a radar wave to send already. You, you can be just a passive receiver and you know the the altitude and the latitude velocity of all the aircraft around you. Yeah. So yeah, that that's all. You don't have any questions. Is this like a control equipment? Because I could assume someone who get hold of this could have fake itself as another aircraft. Uh control. Okay, so I'm not very sure. But uh, only uh, licensed uh, main aircraft maintenance engineers can install this on their aircraft. Yeah. And I never okay, I never go and try to turn this on uh, because of that issue. I scared that if I turn this on, then it starts to transmit, then I'll be in big trouble. So I'd rather not get there. <laughs> Trans transmitting Ooh. on air band outside of air operations is a serious offense in most jurisdictions. Uh, and in, yeah. in Singapore there have been fairly serious prosecutions for it. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Very, let's say if yeah. you are a licensed person, like if let's say you are a pilot, you're operating this thing in an aircraft, right? Then you are allowed to. Right? Like, but if I don't want to take this transporter out of the aircraft, I cannot turn it on already. Yeah. It's, it's really licensed ground controllers and pilots in uh, air controlled airspace operations only. It really can't be on air for any other reason. Mm. The, the table with the, with the altitude. Some of the values are actually for negative altitude, so it means that the maybe the the, the mass means that the, the the plane would approach a certain certain area with a mountain or something having a lower like a lower yeah a negative altitude and then then basically um, so it means that, that the station has to to take care of, of station which would be in the mountain or whatever, is it? Somewhere? Actually not in mountain. Nah. There are some places in the world that's actually below sea level. Yeah, but that's 1,200. One, one uh, I think it's meter, no? No, this is in feet. It's what? It's in feet. F-E-E-T. In feet? Yeah. So 300 feet would mean... Uh, or 900 feet would be would mean 100 meter. Yes. Because okay. there's three feet, three feet per meter. Yes. So that would be one, minus 100 meter. So I don't okay. think there's, there's a place in the world which is 100 meters okay. below sea level, right? <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, there's, there's more to that. The Dead, more to the dead, dead. Sea, 
The Dead yes. Sea is 413 metres below sea level, oh, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. which is 1,354 feet. You would actually go almost 200 feet below this scale if you were touching the Dead Sea. Okay, because of pressure, this thing operates on pressure, so it doesn't actually mean uh, the actual altitude. Okay. okay. It, yeah, so sometimes in, in a high pressure system, uh, sorry, a very low pressure system, right? Sorry, not low pressure, system, very high pressure system, right? The altitude, the altimeter will read a very low value. Mm. Oh, can you design, where, designed uh, to last? <laughs> yeah, uh, Kingman, where uh, where does it get the the input for the altitude? Is the uh, alt the altitude encoder does it measure the altitude on its own, or I mean, where does the yeah where does the transponder get the altitude from? Uh, yes, from an external altitude uh, altitude encoder. It's external external device. So, so it, the encoder is it connected to the altimeter in some way or is it like measuring altitude on its own of the atmospheric pressure okay it's from the atmospheric pressure so again okay, whether it's connected to the actual aircraft altimeter that depends on aircraft to aircraft some aircraft altimeter they can be an encoder also some aircraft altimeter is just an altimeter so they probably need a separate device just to encode the other the information into a digital signal like this and uh is it Rahul Ra Ra asking, right? Okay, so Rahul is a, Ra a pilot also. So, uh, we'll be asking about where, where are you going to set altimeter setting, right? Because on uh, at different uh, areas, right, the ATC will give the pilot the altimeter setting. So, it's to calibrate the altimeter, uh, altimeter to the actual altitude air pressure in that area. So, but for the thing is, for alt alt altimeter encoder, there is no setting for that. So, it will transmit based on 2992 or a uh, default uh, air pressure of 1003 hectopascals. Then when the ATC receives this information, they will correct it to the local, local altimeter setting. Okay, I don't know anybody understands that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 that's that's fascinating. So it's, it's actually, it's the, it's the air traffic controller's equipment that does the conversion, not the pilot. Yeah, the conversion to the local altimeter setting. Yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. So what it transmits does not necessarily uh, is not necessarily the altitude that the pilot sees on the altimeter because this doesn't do the uh, the local atmosphere compensation. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's like as if the altimeter is set to two nine nine two. Right. So where did you find that box from? Oh, my flying club gave it to me because it's not oh, working yeah. anymore. Okay, okay. So, so you know they were throwing it away anyway. Okay, uh, any, any more? Okay. Do you know how much time do I have? Uh, okay, another one. Uh, that ADSB thing that you said, you can just receive it. So the location information for ADSB, it's using GPS or are there like other means? Only GPS. GPS is the only way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. okay uh, so, thanks, Kimmy. So, I guess we have come to the end now. Like, where you guys can hang around and 